Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is At The Helm Sports. I am your host, Derek Helm. Thank you for joining me for episode 114. Please be sure to follow and subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Leave those five-star reviews. If you are watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed. And in the comments section, tell me, how much are you going to play Scotty Scheffler this week? Looks like he's going to be somewhere around 40% owned. Do you think you're going to match that? Going to be a little bit underweight or a little bit overweight? Let us know down in the comments. But this week, we will be diving into the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Going to break down everything from a DraftKings standpoint as well as a betting standpoint. And joining me, we have Dave Utnick. And Mike Carpanini. So we're going to quickly recap Pebble and then dive right into the waste management. But how are we doing, Mike? Boys, how are you now? And Dave. Gentlemen, how are you tonight? So how much did you guys uh, have a chance to watch Pebble over the, the weekend, even though it was pretty brief? Yeah, not much. I wasn't around Saturday, and then Sunday got, you know, rained out. So not a ton. Yeah, I got to watch quite a bit on Saturday, and I mean, obviously, Wyndham Clark was the story. The guy went absolutely nuclear, shooting a 60, and it sucks that they couldn't play on Sunday because, you know, after a round like that, it would have been interesting to see how he plays, and especially if there was a little bit of weather. I mean, there's a possibility he couldn't even win there, so... It would, it would have been nice, and then also greedily from a DraftKings standpoint, I had like four lineups that just, if they could have got an extra round, maybe we could have got there, but ended up winning my money back, so I guess can't get too greedy, because I guess if they did play that final round, we could have went the other way, but Dave, what about you? Any thoughts on, on the tournament overall? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty good viewing on Saturday. Um, I was in and out you know, throughout the course of the day there, but Wyndham Clark just couldn't miss on the green. Um pretty just special you know round to watch in general uh the cup just looked huge for him and no matter what he was doing he was finding a way to make birdie or save par no matter where yeah it was crazy and i mean i'm i'm definitely happy that they made pebble a signature event i said it last week when we were recorded you know one one of my favorite venues and and definitely love it, it it's funny you know I, I brought up there was a sega genesis game that I used to play when I was a kid. It was literally Pebble Beach. That was the name of the Sega game. And over the weekend, I was over at my cousin's house and he literally brought the game out of his closet. So I couldn't remember the name of the game. I knew it was before Tiger Woods, but that was actually the game. And grew up playing that. Absolutely loved the course. So the fact that we have a a big boy tournament there and not this pro-am shit, it's definitely, definitely helpful. And I hope that they have strong fields going forward because I, I, I enjoyed it, even though it was a shortened tournament. It's just a great course in terms of, you know, viewing. And they got rid of the amateurs over the weekend, which was great. Where Saturday you weren't worried about, you know, ridiculous ridiculous coverage of players that you just don't want to watch. And they're not even really players. They're quasi-celebrities. So I thought, you know, tournament was pretty good. I would have liked to have seen another round, whether it was, you know, Sunday, Monday. But I don't know if Wyndham Clark would have held on. But plenty of people out there with tickets. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I I thought about it pre-tournament, but obviously didn't end up getting there. And and then, you know, we we could touch on Liv real quick because obviously, you know, we were talking about it a little bit before we got on. But obviously Pebble not playing on Sunday was huge for Liv. And, and, you know, people actually got to tune in. Excuse me. And it's still just, I mean, the biggest thing for me is, if you're going to keep playing that music, nobody's going to take you seriously. Did you guys get to watch the live at all or, or mm. even have any desire to? I uh, tried to turn it on. So it was on the CW. Didn't really care to go find out what channel that was and just moved along. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I briefly checked once Pebble was was canceled. Basically, my wife was supposed to go down and see her father with the kids. So I thought I was going to be watching Pebble all afternoon, just all by myself. And then we ended up going out to dinner instead. And when I got back, I turned it on and watched the the tail end of it and actually thought about making a a bet on Sergio. Mike, uh, I I almost did it Sunday morning and I would have been pissed. So I'm glad I didn't because that definitely did not end the way I would have wanted it to. But so that 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 is a perfect summary of the state of affairs of live. Like is Sergio is Sergio in a playoff in the PGA tour? 
Zero fucking chance. There is zero fucking chance Sergio would be sniffing anywhere near a fucking playoff these days on the PGA Tour. Um, you know, it was a perfect storm for Liv with, with the weather out in Pebble and, you know, coming off, you know, the 59 from Neiman. I think it was Neiman, right? Um, yeah. And, and they still got practice. Like, nobody gives a shit. No matter how much they want them to, nobody gives a shit. And you're right. I, I could not agree more on the music thing. Um, it is one thing when it's, it's you know, I don't even like music for most of my rounds, but if it's like an at well lazy afternoon Saturday round at a very very reasonable volume, like fine, whatever. But like I, I'll never get past the music. Thing. Yeah, no, no, nobody's ever going to take it serious when when you have, you know, it, it's, and and they did turn it off towards the end. So I mean, so, somebody might have complained. Maybe maybe it's Rom. Maybe maybe they just. I don't know. Maybe the the DJ was only hired for a certain amount of time, and, and he had to go home. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but yeah. That, overall, I, I do think that they are implementing some good things. I mean, obviously, you know, news just came out that that they might be showing every single shot from every single golfer. So if that's a thing, that is great for golf because it's going to force the PGA's hand, and I am all for that. But as far as the shotgun start goes, that just gets a little wonky. There's there's just still a lot of things that need to be ironed out. But, I mean, as a new tour with what seems like an endless supply of money, they they could make some improvements there. But still a long way to go. And, and really, it's just a thorn in our side as long as these guys are not playing together on, on the same course every weekend. And even that shotgun format, you know, when we play in our, you know, shotguns, you know, our friendly shotgun starts throughout the course of the year, the first question is, you know, what hole are you starting on? Because that really makes a difference, and you really lose where you are on the course during the round by starting just in random spots. So it's even tougher for the viewer. But as the golfer, and I'll be an amateur one here, um, it's it's not easy. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Thing. But that's absolutely a real thing. Yeah, and and even from a competitive standpoint, I mean, you have Neiman and you have Sergio. I mean, practically going head to head before the playoff. And it's just, they're not even, they don't even have the same amount of holes left. It's, it's just the whole thing's weird. It'll be like the XFL. If the PGA can grasp a couple of things that make the product better, then live was a success. Cause it's going to make the game of golf better at the end of the day. But I mean, yeah, when you look at the leaderboard, those are real names and they legitimately are real names now but it still doesn't make me want to watch it anymore. I think the format just, it's just, it's just not for me. Absolutely. And, you know, they, they lucked out obviously with Pebble not, not being finished, but I, I do think from a scheduling standpoint, if, if they're going up against a, a real tournament, they have no chance whatsoever for any viewership whatsoever, but it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how it goes forward and, and if they do eventually merge, but, for now, it is what it is, but we can move on to the waste management. So this is obviously one of the best tournaments of the year. You know, from an atmosphere standpoint, just the fans, how rowdy they can get, especially on that 16th hole. It, it, it's great. Now, did take a little bit of a hit as far as the field goes with Hovland pulling out and, and Xander, but still an okay field. And, you know, at, at this venue... I don't care who's golfing. I'm going to tune in every single year. And obviously it's the best pregame you could possibly have for the Super Bowl. So definitely going to be making some wagers, which I already have, and obviously going to be playing a ton of DraftKings. So if we dive into the course, TPC Scottsdale Stadium course, 7,200 par 71. Now the greens are listed as Tiff Eagle Bermuda with Poa and Rye Overseeds. Really, it's just none of those. These greens are unlike most greens on tour. Really, I think Valspar is kind of similar, and I think there's a couple others, but it's it's really not. It doesn't play like a Bermuda at all, and they're not your typical POA, usually a little bit smoother and a little bit faster. Now, generally, this course does run very firm and fast. They are getting a little bit of rain. There might be a little bit of rain on, on Wednesday and Thursday, so maybe that softens up the course a little bit and, and makes it play a little bit different than it has in the past, but generally very firm and fast. So there are 11 par 4s, 4 par 3s, 3 par 5s on the course. 
10 of the 18 holes are par fours ranging from 400 to 500 yards. So obviously you definitely want to look at golfers that are good on par four scoring and more specifically from four to 450, 450 to 500 yards. Now, half of those par fours are a little bit difficult or more of the difficult holes on the course, but the 17th hole is a 330 yard potentially drivable hole. There is some water on, on the course, so it's kind of a risk reward shot, but we've seen a lot of guys just go for the green, end up in that water and still end up with par. So uh, a lot of guys will be trying to drive that green. And then obviously you have the 16th hole, which is the stadium course par three, where just, absolute maniacs chugging beers throwing bottles and just being maniacs but that that's the staple of this course now as far as what we're looking for mid to long irons definitely come into play 150 to 175 yards make up about a quarter of all approach shots you are going to have some shots over 200 yards so definitely want to look at 150 yards and up and, and that's really what you're looking at for most of your approach shots now driving accuracy is just slightly below PGA tour average, but most golfers just choose to absolutely smash it off the tee. So if you do want to look for guys that have a little bit more power here, I think it makes sense. The average driving distance at TPC Scottsdale comes in at 295.7 yards, which is well over tour average. So guys are definitely going to bomb it out there. Now we have 132 golfers in the field, top 65 and ties will make it to the weekend. But if we dive into the DraftKings pricing, should be a good one. Obviously, at the top, we have Scotty Scheffler. Now, Xander has since withdrawn, so he is no longer there. So really, the only two golfers over 10,000 are Justin Thomas and Scotty Scheffler, and they are going to be mega chalk, especially with no Hovland and Xander there. So, Mike, why don't you start us off? What, what do you think at the top? I said last week, uh, I think JT is due for a bounce back. Um, I think that's significant savings over Scotty. Um, you know, you're not going to go wrong with Scotty ever. If you can afford him, you know, afford him by all means to shove him in every lineup you can. But if I'm looking at the high end here, I'm going to be probably starting a lot of my lineups with JT. Um, I'll go back to Homa a little bit too. Like, I was wrong last week. I hit it, but I still think he's in for a monster year. Not sure I super love that price tag, but I get it because there's not a ton here up top. But JT is going to be where I'm heavy here. Yeah, I've already bet Justin Thomas. I got him at 12 to 1 and then took the DK boost, got him up to 15. Obviously, there's a cap on that, so that one's not too great. But took him at the 12 to 1, and, and I'm glad I did because basically I made a bunch of bets first thing Monday morning, and that was before the Hovland news and the Xander news. So all those numbers plummeted. But I, I got Justin Thomas. Guy's been playing great golf. Really, last week, just missed a bunch of putts. So hoping he can he can make a couple more there and and I, I definitely think he can win this tournament you know he, he's played well here in the past he has over the last five years two third places a fourth place and an eighth place so definitely likes it here and, and with the way he's playing I definitely think a win is on the horizon so I already made the outright on him going to be playing I, I honestly right now I mean it could change so I'll, I'll have it in the newsletter if anything does change. But right now, I think every single one of my lineups is either going to have Scotty or or Justin Thomas in it. But Dave, what, what are you thinking here at the top? I mean, you, there is a big difference in pricing between Scotty and Justin Thomas. Scotty, you almost need to win at least a top five to pay off his pricing, especially with you know the salary getting kind of skewed with Xander's withdrawal. Um, these guys are much better than the rest of the field, and Scotty is much better than JT, albeit maybe not currently. So it's going to be tough in terms of where I allocate my ownership here, but you're looking at you know true elites and a very numbered amount of true elites in this field overall. So roster construction, especially as we go along here, uh, is really going to come into play. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, we're probably looking at close to 40% in, in most – tournaments for Scotty. I, I could see in some smaller field, higher dollar stuff, him him being even well over that. And then Thomas probably isn't far behind. I mean, at least 30%, maybe 35% in a lot of tournaments. You, you said it. I mean, they, they are the cream of the crop here. And 
we've seen it time in and time out at, at this course. The cream usually rises to the top. And obviously, it's been Scotty the last two years. Extremely difficult to go three in a row at a, an event, but I definitely think he could do it with the way that that he plays. Now, Mike, you brought up Max Homa. I, I actually like him quite a bit here as well. 9800 I, I think, is a pretty good price for him. Definitely a step down as far as a, a lower tier here, but I, I, I do like a lot of these guys in the high nines here. So, you know, I want to play a ton of Scotty and, and Justin Thomas, but I do have interest in, in Homa. I think Burns could play very well here as well. You know, came sixth last year here. So before that really wasn't too great at TPC Scottsdale, but I mean, a nice showing last year and, and just, he's been playing well this year. So I, I like him and it tends to be a, a good course for Spieth as well. So 9,500 for him is a pretty good price also. But Dave, what, what are you thinking here in this nine K range? Like a lot of the names that you're saying, and I think, you know, that's kind of an important thing to hit on here. Although the course from a tournament history you know, it doesn't play where it's kind of like a, you know, course for horses, if you will. But just the atmosphere is something that, you know, the golfers that have played well here or have been exposed to it. That's a different element than they're used to seeing. We were talking about Liv before. I mean, this is the closest to, I mean, this tournament is basically what Liv wanted to create for the entire tour. So I do like, you know, Sam Burns. Nice to see his top six finish last year, but, you know, missed three out of four cuts before then. Uh, Max Homa, nothing really to write home about here. Um, I do like Sanjay as we go down a little bit further. And you said it, Spieth has really good tournament history. Didn't play great at Pebble, which is a course that he's pretty good at in general. So that's a little concerning, but I do like him here as well. Yeah, I I don't know if I want to play Sungjae. I, I kind of like those three above him a little bit better. Absolutely nobody's going to be playing Matthew Fitzpatrick, so if you want to leverage play, can definitely go there. Didn't look too bad at Pebble outside of his Saturday round, but... And I, it was I just think, one hole. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, otherwise he played pretty well, so I do think you could go back there. Has had a little bit of success here. 10th place and, and a 29th last year, but Sungjae just, I don't know, recently hasn't really looked like himself. Hasn't been terrible, but at this price, I just think there's some other guys that I would rather play. And then if we go right down below him too, Cam Young, I, I do think that this is a course that could suit him, although we haven't seen it yet in his two appearances here. But I, I don't know if I'm going to get there on him either. And and then Thigala should be pretty highly owned. I've also made an outright on him. And as I said, I got lucky on the number. I've seen him as low as 28 to 1. And I got him at 50 with top six each way. So I, I love that. I do like him here. But if he gets extremely popular, you know, back in 2022, he I talked about that drivable par 17. He he took a swing at it and he ended up in that water and he had a chance to win that tournament. So he ended up third. And I, I think a lot of people were on him and, and going to remember that and, and probably go back to him here. So if his ownership gets out of control, I'm okay fading him. And I, I think I might just take the outright and be on my way. But Mike, what do, what are you thinking here in the lower nines? I'm skipping most of the, the top nines mid nines because i love this hot low nine high eight range i think every single one of them are playable in some regard cam young sagi clark i think is you know I, i'm waiting for you guys to tell me he's going to be chalky this week um, no I'm no he's not and, and i'm surprised by it so why cam young all around i just i don't get it i mean i, I don't it's a bomb yeah, of course it, yeah. it's a bomb yeah of course that's why fine but yeah I, mean, I, I just i don't play cam young and do I. I luckily it, it hasn't really hurt me too much so i i mean i just there's don't just get other, it. there's just other yeah there's just other guys that that i'd rather play at, at this price no i mean but at his price i mean his outright number i saw hovering around like 50 to 1 i mean i'd rather go up 200 dollars for fitzpatrick any day of the week you've got you know a major champion winner versus cam young who's won absolutely nothing and it's not yep. like he's been doing much on tour lately i don't understand the price overall and i don't understand a lot of the love for him this week 
they, they, he's just one of those guys where it's either, you know, he seems like there's some people that are just going to play him every week and, and like betting him. And then there's others that just feel like we do. And they're just completely off. It's it's I think just think he's a course dependent guy. They like this is a course I'm willing to roll the dice on Cam Young. Um, I'm not trotting him out there every single week, but I just think this one, if you're going to do it, this one makes sense. And it's it's not. I mean, look at this whole range. Like we're getting excited at JT Poston at eighty nine hundred. Like I know I had he was the name on my list there, but like in what world are any of these guys supposed to be in this price range? But I mean, with the field we're guys. looking at. At least these guys have been doing something recently. I mean, Poston was playing a lot of the swing season. A lot of these guys were, you know, racking up decent finishes while everyone else was, you know, on holiday for, you know, the end of the year. So at least, but I, I just still don't get it with Cam Young, but we can move along in the next range. Yeah, I, I Mike, you brought up Wyndham Clark, and I love him this week. I think this is an even better course for him than last week was. And... You know, this is a guy that that's won quite a bit over the last year. So I, I don't think coming off of a win is is really going to deter him too much. And as I said, I, I I think this course fits him even better. Had a tenth place last year, missed the cut the previous year, but I, I do think that he could play well. Obviously, his game's in, in a nice place, and he might even want to come out and and just prove something because you know people might want to put an asterisk next to that win because it was only three rounds. So. I, I could see him coming out here and doing some damage. So I'll I'll definitely have some Wyndham Clark. And I mean, it's still only Tuesday, but we're looking at somewhere around 12% ownership, which sign me up. Now, if we move down to the 8K range, you brought up JT Poston. Obviously, he has been on absolute fire lately, has looked really good. I'm actually going to be fading him. Similar to what we just said about Cam Young, you know, I, I just I'd rather play some of these other guys in this price range or, or even go up quite a bit. Now, it's scary with how good he's been playing, but he's probably going to be one of the higher owned golfers in this range and just in general. And at the elevated price tag, I'm, I'm fine just hoping he can't pay it off. What what do you think in here, Dave, in, in, in the upper eights? I mean, we, we talked about it a little bit before. I mean, he's JT posting high up in stroke screen total over the last 24 rounds. Scores a lot on birdie or better. Um, price is a little disgusting for my liking, especially with that quality of player. I haven't been much into golf DFS-wise this year. Still kind of focused on football, but I've been playing Benny Ann almost week after week. I think this is another course that fits him well. Um, looking for good ball strikers. He's one of those. Minwoo, uh, Tom Kim, another couple of players that seem to do, you know, everything that aligns every week to make my lineup. And Eric Cole, talk about, you know, players that are just on an absolute heater. He se find, seems to find his way uh, up near the top of the leaderboard anytime I'm checking throughout any of the recent rounds. And then two of my favorite plays going into this week, as we dip down a little bit further, Hideki Matsuyama and Ricky Fowler, um, course history for sure. And when we're talking about class of player in this range, I think these guys stick out um, being mispriced a bit. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I like the Benny on call, been playing well, think it's a, a course that that could suit him pretty, pretty well. So I, I'm in there. Eric Cole has been one of the most consistent golfers on the planet over the last year. So definitely can make a case for him. Now he's never played here. So maybe that's an issue, but I, I'm fine going there. 8,500 is a good price for him. And as you said, Mat Matsuyama 8,400 hasn't been playing too great recently, but been playing well enough. And, and, you know, came 71st last week at, out of 80 golfers, which isn't great, but he did increase his score each round. So looked a little bit better on Saturday. So I'm fine going there. And as you said, he's he's won this back-to-back -back years and 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 played well. I think he's only missed the cut once in, in nine tries, if I remember correctly. But I've also made an outright on him. As I said, got a really good number. I actually got him at 66 to one with six places. And, and that... 
I mean, doesn't exist anymore. So I love that bet. I I, I love him here. This seems to be one of his happy places. So I'm definitely going to be playing some Matsuyama. I do think him and Cole get a little bit popular, but Ricky, I, I haven't made up my mind yet. You know, this is a place where he tends to play well, but so far this year, just something looks off. I, I do think at the price tag, it makes sense to sprinkle him in, and I don't think he's going to get a lot of ownership. So I, I do think that I will end up getting there. But right now, I'm still kind of up in the air. Some other guys in this range, just if, if you want some leverage, nobody is playing Tom Kim. He's only played this once, came 50th place. So, you know, not a great finish, but... He's a good golfer, 8,600, not a terrible price. And if he's only going to be like 5% owned, you, you can make a case to play him. But, Mike, what are you thinking in this range? You guys covered most of it. Honestly, I'm kind of avoiding this range for the most part. Um, I like the Decky call. I just, you know, huge fan of Decky. I like the, the Minwoo call. Um any odd definitely but after that i'm kind of coming down a little bit you know I, I just like plays in the sevens better than this this mid to low eight range all right then then start us off there so you talked about tom kim a little bit he's the only kim in the field i don't like i am good with both of the other kims in this 7k range i like siwu at 79 and i like mike down here at 71 um i think there's a lot of you know plays in between them too uh keith mitchell another you know if we're gonna call it a bomb and gouge course i'm okay going to mitchell there denny mccarthy uh, i still think he's he's you know gonna have a better year and you know didn't quite finish last week but he was looking okay there for a minute you know uh, does Berger ever get it back I'm, I'm not picking i'm just asking like it does Berger I mean, ever get it back i i i think so i mean i i like the fact that he already has two tournaments under his belt now obviously missed the cut at the farmers but he he looked okay at the mx and call me crazy in some larger field stuff i might play him this week and I mean, he should be able to get it back. Even Will Zalatoris, who came off pretty significant, a pretty significant injury, has already started to look not exactly like him, his former self, but he bounced back pretty well. Berger has just had so many injuries over time. You'd like to see him get back. Um, it's a matter of, you know, what tournaments he plays. But I mean, you can't quote me on this. I feel like this is a course he's played well at over the years, too. But that's just a gut feeling, not based on fact. Um, no, I, th I think he's been all right. Uh, no, not really, not recently. Tw 2022 missed cut, 2021 missed cut. Did come ninth place in 2020, but then missed the cut in 2019. So three missed cuts in his last four appearances and, and a ninth place. Well, going in, I thought Denny also would have fit this course well, and he's missed the last three cuts now that I've looked up actual information. So yeah, I guess I don't know much here. De Denny really doesn't – I don't know. It, it's just another guy that it just looks – something's off this year so far. Now, obviously, that, that can turn around on any given week, but – You haven't really needed to have, like, an elite putter yet, and when his irons are bad, they're really bad. So he really yeah. has to get spike iron weeks and normal putting for him to get to the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, I, I do like, you know, we're, we're in the 7K range, but skipped over Adam Hadwin, eight $8,000. I like him. He's actually played pretty well here, came 10th place last year. And then I, I, I think he could play pretty well. He's played good at the Amex. He's not too bad at, at desert golf. So I'm definitely there. I don't hate the call on Siwoo, Mike. I, I think I'm probably going to end up getting there on him. Uh, Batia is another guy that I've actually made an outright on. I, I got him at 66 to one as well with six places and at 7,800. I, I think he's actually going to be pretty popular here. Bombs it off the tee. And, and obviously that's something that we definitely like here with the long putter. It looks like his putting stroke has definitely improved. So I, I'm definitely going to be playing quite a bit of Batia here. And one other name we skipped past was Bo Hostler at AK Flat, who's another guy that's just been playing really good golf recently. Not great in terms of tournament history here, played pretty well last year, but he's a different player than he was in the past too, so I wouldn't even take tournament history 
with too much credence here. Yeah, he, he's definitely been playing good golf. I I think I'm going to try, you know, similar strategy to last week that kind of paid off is I'm going to try and fit as much up top as possible and then kind of just pick and choose down here. But I definitely like Batia. I like the Keith Mitchell call, Mike. I, I think 7500 is a good price for him. I, I mean, he has a 10th place finish here two years ago, you know, only one missed cut over the last five years. So I, I do think this is a place where Mitchell could possibly do some damage. Hasn't been great this year, but had some flashes last week where he he looked pretty good. So I, I do like that. Mark Hubbard, probably another guy that that gets a little popular. 7400 is a good price for him. And then, I don't know, Dave, what, what are you thinking in the 7K range? Anyone we haven't mentioned that you like? As I'm scrolling through the names, I don't like much here. Um, really tough for me to find kind of players that I like fit in the course. One of them you just named is Mark Hubbard. Kind of like uh, just everything he does, playing pretty decent lately. Uh, Bobby Mack was a late add into the tournament here. Um, talk about bomb and gouge. That's something that he can do pretty well. But Lucas Glover hasn't been playing great lately. Kurt Kitayama is a player I play a lot. Um, played pretty well here last year. Adam Shank, Brian Fox, and Eric Von Royen. But so this is going to be a tough range for me. Um, I don't like a lot of what's going on here. I like the Kims, like Mike said, um, but going to be a pretty tough range for me and probably going to influence how I build a lot. Yeah, I actually like Billy Horschel quite a bit. 7,100 has some good course history here. Hasn't been playing the best golf recently, but I mean, if you look at the caliber of golf, golfer, I can't even speak golfer. He is compared to a lot of these guys in this range. I definitely like that. I've actually made an outright on him at 100 to one with six places. So I, I think he could do some damage here, you know, on, on that 16th hole, probably flip off a couple fans and scream at them and then maybe go on to Eagle 17 and, and win the tournament on Sunday. I he wouldn't had, mind it. He had some sort of hip injury in the beginning of last year and never seemed to have bounced back. He had some sort of withdrawal and was struggling with it for a while. And I just don't remember him popping up really anywhere last year. No, he, he really hasn't been – very good. And I mean, in his couple appearances this year, he has a, a miscut at the Farmers, miscut at the Amex. Now he did play at the Sony and, and came 18th there. So I do like the fact that he has three tournaments under his belt this year and actually came top 20 in one of them. So, and then, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Last year was a disaster looking at it. I mean, a ton of miscuts. And then, Towards the end of the summer, had a 13th at the 3M Open and a fourth at the Wyndham. So did did turn it around a little bit. And I, I the fact that he already has a top 20 this year, this is a course that he's played well. And the fact that he, his salary is so low here compared to these other guys, I, I, I'm willing to take a shot there. And then Luke List, I think this is a good course for him as well, although the results haven't really been there. I do think he's playing good enough golf that at 7,100, it can make some sense there. Mike, what are you thinking down in the sixes? Anything stand out to you? Uh, the one that stands out is the other Kim, Seung Young Kim. Um, other than that, it's just going to be kind of dart throws at at kind of how much money I have left. Um, I don't hate Sam Ryder at sixty nine. Um, you know, a couple of couple of you know just just real deep ones here. I saw them and now I lost them. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're yeah, at the cut 45 seconds I, here. I like I like Nate Lashley, 6900 has played well here in the past, played pretty good last week, so I I think I'll go there at 6900. Scott Stalling, 6700, another guy that's played pretty well here over the past couple years and and 6700 isn't a terrible price for him. Seamus Power is actually a guy that that has been pretty good in the past and had a couple flashes here recently. And last year came 20th at, at the course. I've also made an outright on him at 250 to one with six places. Betting a lot of guys at deep odds, which seems kind of counterproductive here, considering I said the cream usually rises to the top. Now, with that being said, obviously, I bet one of the favorites at Justin Thomas, but... 
with the way this year's been going, we've seen a lot of long shots. So, you know, I, I have him at the top and and then the rest of my card is guys basically 50 and one and lower, but maybe one of them can even just hit there each way and, and two of them hit there each way and, and Thomas wins. I'm, I'm more than happy with that. And then really as low as I'm probably going here is Justin. Suh, 6,600, I think is pretty good for him. You know, he, he can catch fire with the putter similar to, to what we said with Denny McCarthy, but at times we can see the irons, you know, follow suit with the putter. So I, I don't hate him here, but Dave, what are you thinking in the sixes? This is TPC Scottsdale. So TPC lately is always in play. Uh, KH Lee at 6,900, uh, decent course history here. Um, but always shows up on TPC courses for sure. Uh, Justin lower going down a bit at 6,300, Played here last year, T50. It's been playing some decent golf, especially down at that price uh, that you can fit some things in here. But digging deep in a field like this is not that recommended. Um, I don't see a ton of names that I'm going to be interested in here. It probably leads you to a you know balanced build. Sam Ryder, like Matt said, or uh, Mike said before. And Jake Knapp played pretty well over the last uh, – couple of tournaments here and can really bomb the ball so he could be a 6k flyer for you mike did you ever uh find who you were looking for there seamus power was one of them cooch was also another one i think it's a nice little event for cooch just like last week i said when you know the pro-am doesn't bother him because he's just a friendly guy same thing at you know the ga's version of Viv. like he you know kind of gets into that sort of shit um those were the two that I found, and then I'm not going to lie, I've kind of forgotten to stop looking. Fair enough. So as far as outrights go, the card that I have so far, we have Justin Thomas at 12 to 1. I have Sahith Thigala at 50 with six places. I have Hideki Matsuyama at 66 with six places. I have Akshay Bhatia, 66 with six places. Billy Horschel, six places, 100 to one. And Seamus Power, 250 to one and six places with him as well. Dave, have, have you made any outrights yet? I have <clears throat> one outright in. Uh, Ricky Fowler at 70 to one with top five each way. Got that boosted to 91 to one. Uh, I've been looking at Matt Fitzpatrick. I've bet him each of the last two weeks. Why stop now? Um, he's one of the names I've been looking into. Benny Ann I've been looking into. Uh, Sam Burns, I think I missed the opportunity to bet him because his number crashed, but not loving much. Um, I missed the Hideki number. I was going to bet Denny, but realized today that he sucks on this course. So might be another light week for me, and after the Super Bowl, dive back into full cards. Yeah, that, that's sort of the issue is generally I, I wait, you know, until this week to really just go full bore back into golf. But as soon as it started back up, I, I went back in there and with with these long shots winning and it's killing me. So we need to make some magic this week. And, and this is definitely the tournament to do it. But Mike, have you looked at anything betting wise or not? Nah? I'm looking at it now. I don't have anything in yet, but since we're talking about it, the two that really kind of stand out to me is Decky at 40 and Siwoo at 55. I'm good with both of those. Um, you know, even if you wanted to kind of just play that safe, Decky's eight plus 800 for for top five, and Siwoo is plus a thousand. I think both of those are are well within play. Um, now, I don't know how much deeper than that I'm going. I think Denny at you know eight at eighty is you know you could do worse at eighty. I mean you don't have to be right very often. Um, nothing super up top is really interesting here though. It's middle and below. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it. We've obviously done a good job breaking down the whole field. Went through the bets, went through the DraftKings. I think it's going to be a good week, but thanks for joining me. Dave, any final words? I uh, Enjoy this and the Super Bowl, guy, everybody. Yeah, definitely will. And Mike? Yeah, good, good. 
weekend for you know us specifically because you know these are our two favorite sports so you know fuck everybody else but we all get to have a good weekend yeah and i mean basically it's either going to be a great weekend or a terrible weekend because there is going to be a lot of money bet and placed into DraftKings lineups but that's going to do it for this week head over to thehelmsports.com now as of writing this i have actually switched websites so it might actually not have the updated articles up there but they should be up there probably by wednesday night check it out revamp the site switched up a couple things obviously if you are watching this hit that subscribe button turn on the notifications smash that like in the comment section tell me what you're doing with scotty this week and then when you're done with that if you're not subscribed on apple podcast or spotify go do that too okay it's time golf is starting we're in full swing we're gonna win a ton of money this year so if you're joining us for the first time Hope you enjoyed the show. Obviously, the Waste Management is one of the best tournaments of the year. And we'll be coming back later in the week with some Super Bowl episodes. So definitely check that out. But that's going to do it for this week. As always, thank you for listening. I'm your host, Derek Helm. And remember, Stefan out there.